And welcome back to Hannity. All right, a story that no one else in the mainstream media is covering. Former Army Lieutenant Clint Lawrence is now in jail, convicted of murder after he ordered his platoon to shoot at three Afghan men that approached their patrol on a motorcycle at a higher than normal speed in Kandahar back in 2012. Now, two of the men were killed. The third ran away. Military prosecutors, they said Lawrence violated rules of engagement, while his defense and his supporters say he was trying to defend his men. He didn't even fire a weapon. Now, earlier this month, his guilty verdict was upheld, but his original 20-year sentence was reduced only by a year, so it's 19 years. A petition for a presidential pardon for Lieutenant Lawrence has now received more than 100,000 signatures needed for a White House response. By the way, and that's up on my website, Hannity.com. Joining me now, Clint's mother, Anna Lawrence, his attorney, John Mayer, and retired Army Ranger Sean Parnell, who wrote uh, this week an article entitled Clint Lawrence could be any of us. Guys, good to see you. Anna, l let me start with you. I've talked to you now a couple of times on radio. Um, your son, he was leading this platoon, right? Yes, he was, Sean. Okay, and this, he was told that this particular road was an area where there was a lot of terrorist activity, right? Yes, he was told that it was heavy with Taliban. Yeah, and also we know that other members of the platoon had been shot and killed in that exact same area in recent weeks, right? Correct. He was sent there to replace the lieutenant that had uh, been wounded. Okay. And so he didn't know these soldiers, and they didn't know him. All right, so then all of a sudden the motorcycles are approaching. He's got to make a split-second decision in a war zone. How did, how, did that, how did that get to this point where he got prosecuted for this? I have no idea. Um, I have absolutely no idea how it became, uh, got, they got a prosecution from him protecting himself and protecting his platoon, Sean. But I do feel that if he had not made that call that he made um, and gave permission to fire, I feel that my son today would be called a hero killed in action. Yeah. John, you're the attorney. How did we get to this point if he's in an area where there's well-known Taliban and, and terrorist activity and people in that platoon have been killed on that very road and a motorcycle, which has been the tactic that is used by the enemy, that is approaching them at high speed. He orders them to shoot. He doesn't even shoot himself. How does he get convicted for that in a war zone? He got convicted, Sean. What happened was everything that Anna and you just articulated was discounted by the government prosecutors. Instead, they characterized the entire events that the two men that were shot and killed and the third that ran away were innocent civilians. But as it turns out, after we've been investigating now when we came on the case after the trial, we've uncovered very solid and apparently very good evidence indicating that everyone on the field that day, not just five of the seven Afghan military age males, but all seven of them out there are connected to IED there, networks. Was there anybody in the platoon that was with Clint that said that that was the wrong decision? That I don't rightly know, but I do know well, that each not, soldier who... Then, then who made the determination from afar that this was the wrong thing to do? The chain of command. The entire chain of People command that determined there. that... Yes, that's correct. People that were off that particular strong point, they were back in the rear, they were at the battalion and or brigade headquarters. They made a determination that the people were killed that were innocent civilians. Sean? And that gives rise yeah, go ahead. to the biggest problem in this case. And the biggest problem in this case, Sean, is the idea that the evidence was sitting on government databases. It was a very easy, relatively straightforward database search to identify all of those Afghan military age males. The prosecutor, once in the opening statement, several times in the closing statement, and three times in the sentencing statement, presented and urged the jury that there's no suggestion that these men were Taliban. As it turns out, there's every suggestion right. to turn that they're Taliban. Sean, Clint Lorenz could be any of us. So yeah. let me understand this. So we're, we're asking young men to sign up for war, risk their lives, go in a war zone, be told about a specific area where people are dying and a specific tactic of using motorcycles. Mm -hmm. He protects his troops and, and orders that they battle people that are at them in the motorcycle, and then he gets 20 years in jail. Who, who would ever want to serve uh, under right. conditions like that? You cannot win. You're either going to make a decision wait and die or you know what do we what do we want these guys to do 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you're absolutely right, Sean. I mean, this, this case haunts me because I look back on some of my experiences in Afghanistan and I think of a number of different occasions that, my gosh, this could be me. Um, you know, the benefit of the doubt in a combat situation should always go with the soldier on the ground that has the most intel. And let me ask you a question here. How is what Clint Lawrence did on the battlefield any different than how President Obama evaluates and executes his drone program? He gets intelligence from his, the, the Joint Chiefs of Staff and National Security Advisors. He makes assessments of the battlefield and sometimes has to make a very difficult call as to whether or not engage the enemy on the battlefield. And by the way, children it, have been killed, confirmed. That's exactly right. And innocent, you know, casual casualties have taken place, so-called collateral exactly damage. Right. Their non combatants oftentimes lose their life. So my point is is that we should hold, you know, our soldiers on the battlefield to the same standard that the president in his right. in his administration holds himself. And oh by the way, this entire conversation assumes that the people that Clint engaged on the battlefield were innocent, which I don't believe that they were. All right. Uh, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, Anna, I just want to say to you the uh, on my website um, hannity.com, we have the story there. And how many, how many people now, over 100,000, have signed the petition? How many do you need? We, we um, have 30 days to get as many as possible. We actually needed 100,000, and we have 105 now. Okay, so and, um, as many so people are watching right now, if they can head over to my website, you can sign the petition there and help out Clint Lawrence. Uh, I'm very sorry you're going through this, and I appreciate you guys telling your story. We'll stay on this story. Thank you, Sean. All right, and coming up...